This video describes the surgical release of the superficial perineal nerve in a patient who'd had multiple knee procedures and a significant amount of neuropathic pain in the perineal nerve distribution. You can see here that I'm going to also do a common perineal nerve release, but this video will show you the release of the superficial perineal. The markings are 3.5, 4, and 4.5 centimeters lateral to the spine of the tibia with the distal incision measurement being 10 centimeters proximal to the lateral malleolus and then 15 and then the last one at 4.5 20 centimeters proximal to the malleolus. You'll make an incision in this area and these marks at 10, 15, and 20, 3.5 4 and 4.5 will be helpful to you or you can struggle a little bit as I did initially when I was learning how to do this procedure. I'm careful as I go through the soft tissue. I want to decompress the superficial perineal nerve and I don't want to cut that nerve or any of its tiny tiny branches. And you'll see in this video, and certainly in the longer extended video, how I slow down at this point here distally. So in this patient, the exit point of the superficial perineal nerve from deep to superficial is at about 10 centimeters. Here's that little tiny little branch coming off the superficial perineal nerve where it makes, it ex where it makes its exit below the transverse crural septum. Now, initially when I was learning to do this operation, I would go for this line right here, which I call a fat pad line. Nerves like fat, and so I intuitively thought, oh, I'll find the superficial perineal nerve in that fat. But no, it's not there. It's lateral to the fat. So if you come in incorrectly and you get into that fat, just move lateral. Now, when you're opening up this entrapment point, open it up first proximally, not distally where it is going to start doing the branching you'll run the risk of decompressing the main superficial perineal nerve and clipping and cutting one of those little terminal branches, which is exactly what you do not want to do. In a patient with neuropathic pain from compression, you don't need to give them neuropathic pain from a neurotomatic injury. So this part of the procedure is a very slow down part of the procedure. Just take your time, lift up that fascia, do the release just off of where you can see the nerve. So I'm not releasing right on top of the nerve, I'm just releasing a little to the side of it. As well, you're always going to be looking for a second branch coming off the superficial perineal nerve, approximately at this level. And if there is a branch going laterally, then follow that through its separate tunnel. Once you get the nerve completely released proximally, then you can turn distally and literally move your body so that you're now working from proximal to distal. I can feel here where the nerve is going deep in between the muscle and then it's nice and loose. And I'll also be doing a long fasciotomy of the anterior and lateral muscle uh, compartments. Fasciotomy will be longitudinal and also transverse. Now, when you see that little bit of thickening of that fascia, you want to make sure there's not a second perineal branch in there. So a transverse as well as long, longitudinal fasciotomy. And you can see when I do those transverse fasciotomies how that fascia opens up. So you want to completely release that fascia both longitudinally and transversely so that you don't have any compression from tight fascia in that muscle com compartment that could irritate subsequently that sensitive superficial perineal nerve. You can see you need that release longitudinally as well as transversely. Now there's little branches coming off the superficial perineal nerve here, and this is where you really slow down. You wanna decompress that nerve, and as I move distally, I'll see the end of that fascia, which is termed the lateral crural septum, it's very thin, but it's very tight. You can lift the patient's leg off the table with that thin but very compressive tissue. Sometimes at this point, you'll see an actual color change in the superficial perineal nerve and a dent in the nerve. There's a little vessel here. Fine to burn that vessel, but make sure it's just a vessel and not a tiny branch of that superficial perineal nerve. And now you can see that 
a little branch coming off. I call that the J branch. It twists back. And so if you're coming, zooming down, you can cut right through that. So you want to be very careful in these distal branch points. And I've neuraliced that little J branch a little bit from the main nerve so that the excursion on those distal branches is independent and loose as compared to the main superficial perineal nerve. I always run my finger proximally to make sure there's no bit of fascia left over that's compressing the nerve. You always look laterally to make sure there's no separate superficial perineal nerve branch. In a patient with significant pain, I'll put a pain pump in. I won't drain this. This operation is done under tourniquet. And the dressing, post-operative dressing, is just a soft, bulky dressing. Patients allowed to ambulate as they're comfortable.